our planet has an incredibly complex ecosystem, as well as a finite amount of resources. In a world where it's every man for himself, our planetary resources have began to dwindle at an alarming rate. If we continue to consume at our current pace, we may run out of resources and in the process cause irreversible damage to Earth and life itself. The possibility of destruction has made sustainability an important topic to people across the globe. The concept of sustainability focuses on slowing down resource use so that it's balanced with the rate of renewal. The goal is to stop depleting resources so that life can continue for a longer period of time. Here at Hope College, the school has had a long journey with sustainability, and there's no end in sight. And although the school has made a ton of progress, most of the student body remains unaware of what changes have been made and how sustainable the school really is. There are many colleges, most liberal arts colleges, frankly, in the United States, when they were founded in the 1800s, 1900s, were founded by Christians of one stripe or another. Uh, many of them gave up their Christian identity. Hope refused to do that. It's in our DNA. I mean, we're a Christian college, and uh, we ought not shy away from that. Certainly not when it comes to the Christian message of uh, caring for creation. Genesis 1 and 2 tell us that we humans are made out of the earth, we are Adam from the Adama. Adama means dirt, soil. We're soil creatures, earth creatures. We're also made in God's image, Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Genesis 2, 15 says, The Lord God took the Adam, the human earth creature, put us on the earth, in the garden, to Avad and Shamar, serve and protect. Given who we are, these earthy creatures made in God's image, called to exercise dominion, not understood as domination, which is how, frankly, many people have understood it, unfortunately, but dominion as serving and protecting. We're not even out of the first two chapters of Genesis. Already we're told this, right? That that's the biblical call to have stewardship of creation or the earth. So if there weren't these other reasons, you know, that, well, our planet's in trouble, that's a good reason, right? Whether, whether you're religious or not, that's a good reason to care for creation. But we have these other reasons that go to the heart of our very identity. We ought to care for creation because as a place that, that takes its Christian identity seriously, even if not everyone here is a Christian still, we ought to be caretakers of creation because of our, our Christian heritage. We presented uh, to Jim Boltman um, in March of 2008 a report with, I think there were eight recommendations for things Hope could do better. And one of the recommendations was to set up a permanent group to um, focus on sustainability issues. We had, I think, 12 or 14 people, including a bunch of students. And then what grew out of that was the, the Hope Sustainability Advisory Committee as a permanent freestanding committee, otherwise known as the Green Team. We quickly got that moniker. I think one of the students actually referred to us as that. And that's been around now since um, September of 2009. So 10, we're going on our 11th year. And now I, I've chaired that group for, um, well, a little part, better part of a decade or more. And there are currently, I think, 13 people on it, including staff administrators, faculty, and we currently have, I believe, five students. So we have this really amazing group of people. We meet twice a month, and we've made a lot of progress in the last decade because of the existence of the Green Team. We just work on different initiatives every year uh, regarding sustainability. So um, this year I think we're working on some things with um, waste management, setting some uh, goals, uh, always working on water initiatives, um, just a lot of different stuff, so it's a, it's a great group to be part of. When thinking about projects, whether it be conserving water or switching out light bulbs, the Green Team uses the triple bottom line concept as a guide. 
sustainability is often talked about as the triple bottom line and so that refers to people planet and profit so when businesses often look at their economic model they're just looking at the the bottom line the cost of doing things but so this triple bottom line allows you to also bring in the environmental impacts of those decisions as well as the social impacts of those decisions and so we try to bring that model in here at hope as well as at the city and trying to decide when we're making this a decision about things we don't want to just look at it from a cost perspective but we also want to look at it from um, how it impacts our employees our staff our students and um, and then also our environment around us how can we make better choices and be better stewards I know our dining services team does a lot um, food has a huge impact on, on the sustainability from the food waste um, and then also all the way to the materials that it's coming in and where it's coming from. So trying to do a lot more sourcing of local foods um, has been something that Creative Dining has been trying to pay attention to. A few years ago, before I even got here, they instituted a uh, trailless dining system. And so that was kind of newer for colleges to adopt when they were getting on board with it. I went to a conference, this is about 12 years ago now, and there are no, no trays. So we're, we're the outsiders, faculty and there were students and staff from this college, are quickly informed that they don't have trays, they just had to take plates. So I, I then started asking questions of my hosts about why they were doing this and you know what results. They were saying they were saving money, uh, less wasted food, uh, saving electricity, etc., detergent. It took one semester and we got rid of all the trays. While the changes made in these dining halls are a fantastic example of what the Green Team does on campus, they don't capture the entirety of the group's work. The Green Team strives to not only change pre-existing systems, it also strives to create new, sustainable ones. In the past five years, the group has accomplished this goal by encouraging LEED certification for most of the newer buildings on campus. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, and so this is a certification that you can get um, through the U.S. Green Building Council, and so it helps you to evaluate your buildings when you're putting it together. So it kind of ties back into that triple bottom line where you're looking at not only just the economics of building a building, but you're also looking at the environmental and the social impacts of that building on the inhabitants that are going to be staying in there as well as out to the community as well. So, um, for example, with the environmental impacts, it looks like at water and energy, air quality, um, it looks at like using passive solar, like big windows and things along those lines, um, low flow toilets and faucets, etc. And then from a social standpoint, it looks at the actual materials that are in the building. So making sure that they're low or no VOC, so there's no off gassing in those materials. So it then allows for a healthier workforce from that standpoint. Um, you also have to um, look at transportation. So is the building close to buses and can people bike to bike to the building and things along those lines. So we have Jack Miller, we have the Boltman Student Center, and Campus Ministries is actually going after LEED certification as well. And I don't think it's, so struggles with sustainability at, at HOPE are any different than any other organization is really going to face. Um, HOPE actually has a really open um, mind to adopting more sustainable practices, but with some of them it just depends on what the investment is and how we can try to make a little bit more of a return on that, um, if it's more of a significant infrastructure change. Um, but one of the biggest things is, I think, behavior change. And it's not because people don't want to do it. I don't think that that's the case. I think it's they just don't um, know the proper ways of doing things. Along with the short-term goals and projects, Hope's Green Team has their eyes set on the future. They refuse to stop until they've done all they can to care for creation and create the best possible world for future generations. I would love to see Hope be a leader in sustainability and sustainable operations. Um, our new buildings are LEED certified, um, which is great, but I would love to have the whole campus on board with doing everything we can to be more sustainable. I see one of the biggest goals of the green team, especially when we involve students, is um, communication to the wider campus and education. So we're working on different initiatives, but really a lot of it 
depends on the people using it. So we can put out as many recycle bins every five feet if we want, but if nobody's going to throw the right stuff in, then it's useless. So um, a lot of it's education. Um, I think that's one of the key roles of the green team is um, influencing the rest of campus. Margaret? And third and last, what's one thing you can do here and now to be a better Earth Keeper? Being kind of ambiguous in what is on those signs so you can better understand it. Because honestly, I have no idea what's compostable and what's recyclable. What is kind of your vision, <laughs> the ideal that we should be aiming for? Oh my goodness. When you all come back for your 20 year class reunion, that you, uh, you could drink the water out of Lake Makatawa and not worry about getting sick. Maybe you see some wind turbines on buildings, maybe some solar panels, but uh, much more uh, efficient energy use. Um, that you find uh, lots of trees. We have a lot of them now, but some of them are getting old and we need to replace them. And you don't replace a tree, you know, overnight. Uh, a curriculum in which no student can graduate and not uh, have two or three or a dozen courses that have something to do with sustainability. It's going to become a more pressing issue. It's not going away. And colleges of all sorts need to, um, need to think about changing their curriculum in ways that help their students become uh, creation caregivers. So we need to prepare our students to live in that kind of a, kind of a future.